Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome back to part three of creating my abandoned VW Beetle Penjing. In part two of this series, I made the beetle all rusty with oil paints and I planted the landscape with moss and a little hill here. Today, I'm going to add the trees. In part two, I showed some of the trees I was thinking of using in the landscape. So some miniature conifers. I forgot to show you my uh, lemon cypress. This is a gift from Bonsai J. And I've had it, I think, three years now. And I was thinking of using the Chinese elm to kind of grow out the back of the vehicle. And I'm, I'm changing my decision on that. I think the leaves are still too big for this penjing. I'm going to keep it all, you know, small conifers in the planting. I think this would look out of scale with the other trees. Normally in a forest, I place my larger trees up front, the smaller trees in the back to create depth and force perspective. I may not do that today. I may grade the trees on the foliage texture. So the coarser foliage will come up front and trees with a finer foliage will go towards the back of the planting. Again, creating forced perspective. I can always grow these trees to different heights in the future, kind of balancing the look of the forest to make it a little more pleasing. Let's have a look at the foliage on the trees. So I would say the coarsest foliage is this Japanese cedar, Cryptomeria japonica. It's got fairly long needles, so that one would come out front. The tree with the next largest foliage, I think, is this Port Oxford cedar. So that would come next. The next largest foliage is this Cryptomeria japonica compressa. And then I think this one, the Sawara false cypress. So I can put that next. And then I think the finest foliage is on my lemon cypress. So we'll put that at the back. So here is a look at the five trees graduated from the coarsest foliage back to the finest. So that's the order I'll put the trees in. The ones with the coarser foliage will go up front. The ones with the finer foliage towards the back. And then if the heights don't look right, well, I'll grow them you know, slowly over the years to adjust the heights to get something that looks good in the forest. That's the plan anyway, the overall plan. I've got the trees graded by their foliage. Next, I have to decide on a style for the trees. Do I want them to look like deciduous trees? Do I want them to look like coniferous trees? Somewhere in between, do I want them to look like bushes or trees? There's a lot of uh, decisions to be made in the planting. And I think a lot will come down to trying the tree out in the planting and just see what looks good. I can see this lemon cypress here. It already has like a deciduous tree form with the upright kind of branching. Um, so that could look good, kind of almost the style it is, just trimmed up. Maybe this one too. Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, I think it's something I'll just have to try in the landscape and see what looks good and what fits. And I was at the Canadian National Exhibition in Toronto on Monday and there was a vendor selling medical supplies and they had a few fancy pairs of scissors. So I bought them. I'll show you what they look like. Here is a look at the scissors I got. So these were sold as uh, herb trimming scissors and they're very comfortable in your hand. I, I really like those. They'll be good for pruning up small trees. And then I got a pair of stork scissors. I can't resist stork scissors. They're so cool. I've got the lemon cypress on the turntable. I think it's, it's a very upright tree and I think the deciduous tree form will suit this. Uh, if I went with a more of a coniferous type look to this tree and the planting, 
I don't think it would match the moss quite as nicely. Uh, usually under coniferous forests, because all the needles drop and it kind of creates a bit of an acid soil underneath the trees, it generally it's not very lush under a coniferous forest. So I think, you know, all the moss I have planted in the uh, pot will match more if I style this tree as a deciduous tree. So that's what I'll go for. So I'm going to start by an overall prune to get the canopy looking rounded to kind of trim all this new growth back. And of course, I'll be using the blue scissors. So here I go. I'll, I'll start with pruning the height and I, I think somewhere in here. So here I go. Big cuts coming up. And it may leave a little browning at the tips, but that'll grow out eventually. It's pretty hard to avoid browning the tips on a conifer. So I've kind of got the height now, so now I need to round it. And this will be sort of a, oh, it smells beautiful. It smells like lemons. Uh, yeah, it'll be sort of a rounded ball-shaped form. Oh. Something like that. Now, as far as a front for the tree, this isn't bad here. I've got the trunk comes up and it's got a strong branch off to the right hand side here. That would look quite nice. So I'll try out my new little scissors. I'll prune off this one coming straight out the front like that. And then I'm looking to create a bit of branch separation. So like this one is a bit long. I'll prune it back. I've got some upright growth I can prune back. Okay, I, I think that's you know quite reasonable. You can see the branch structure now. Here's a look at how much I took off the first tree. So I would say maybe about half the foliage. All right, I'll get the tree out of the pot. Just loosen it up. There we go, oh, nice bonsai soil. Thanks, Bonsai Jay. That's awesome. I'll get out the root rake and uh, comb the roots out a bit. So what I'm looking for here is to find the start of the root base. Usually with cuttings, they're planted quite deeply. And you can see this is the case that I'm getting more trunk on the tree, which is probably a good thing in this case. And because this is in really good bonsai soil, I'm not going to disturb the roots too much because I am kind of repotting out of season, even though, you know, these root is cuttings quite easily. So just kind of cleaning up the base of the tree a bit. That's pretty good there. And then I'll just comb out the roots so they're not kind of circling around the pot so much. I mean, they're not too bad. I'll get the drainage screen off the bottom here. Like that. Bit of combing. Loosen up the roots on the side here. And that's ready for planting. You know, a very safe repotting. All right, I've got the pot up here. So I was thinking of putting this on the hill. I think that would look best. It's a good spot. There's a nice area there for the roots. It looks tall and majestic on the hill. I think that's the spot for it. So I need to remove my moss here. So I'll do that. I can replant that around the tree. And then I've got to dig out a pocket of soil to 
put the tree in. So I'll move a little more moss towards the back here. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think I better trim these roots just a bit. You can see there's lots of fine feeder roots. So I'm just going to trim off the outer profile just to get it a little more compact. I'm sure new roots will grow in very quickly. There's lots of fine feeder roots in this planting. Like that. Okay. I'm going to wet this down, so I'll give it a watering, and then I'll add moss. Okay. Moss usually leaves a nice humidity level for roots to grow in. Not too wet, not too dry. Okay, I think I just need a little moss to touch up some of these areas around the back here and maybe up top. So I'll just get a little bit more moss to, to apply to the planting. All right, I've collected some more moss from the sidewalk out front. So this moss is growing in full sunlight uh, on the sidewalk, so it's really good moss for bonsai. And I don't know the scientific name for it. Uh, everyone just calls it sidewalk moss. But it, it's really good moss for bonsai. Okay, so now it's time to plant tree number two, this Sawara false cypress. So this has also should go to the back because it's got kind of quite fine foliage. Now where? Um, where do I have room is the question. So if I rotate around, I have a nice spot here to plant a tree. So let me see how that would look out front. If I had a tree in behind the beetle there. Um, I think it can look okay. I'll try and, you know, push it towards the other tree a bit. I do want it to look like a forest, that the tree is, or the, the car is abandoned in a forest. I don't want it to look like it's out in the middle of a field. So in here I have two trees. One is a cutting that I rooted off of this tree when I pruned this tree. So this tree has been pruned once and it needs another pruning. So let's get this tree out of the pot and try planting it. So this tree is straight from the nursery. I've pruned it once. I'll take out my front marker because that may change. And it's in pretty organic soil. It's this tree will have a tougher transition to bonsai soil, but it looks like the root base is pretty well at the surface here. Now, here's my cutting. I may use my cutting also as a kind of a tree or a bush. So we've got some hot weather coming. Uh, possibly the hottest weather of the summer up in the 30s Celsius. So nice warm weather coming. So I'll have to be careful to keep this planting well watered. Keep it out of the direct sun. I'll put it on the floor of the greenhouse until it recovers and starts growing. But if it survives this, it'll have a fairly good root system. It's the start of one. Okay, so the tree is planted. I'll give it a water. Seems to be good. 
And then I can add my moss back, you know, extending my hill out a bit here. Yeah. So that can get planted in here. I'll just dig out my soil. I'm hoping these don't look too evenly spaced. I'll rotate it. There's longer roots on this side, so I'll get the tree close to the other one. There's a few root hairs sticking up here I'll have to prune off. That tree is planted. I think this one has a good chance of survival. Had a nice radial root system. I didn't have to prune very many roots off. Should be quite good. Okay, rotating back to the front. Let's see how it looks with the car in there, if the car even fits. All right, Beetle. Here's a look at the planting from the front. So you can barely see that little tree, but it's there as a bush. And it's kind of tight against the car, which looks good. It looks like it's overgrown. Next, I've got three more trees to plant. I think, you know, a couple here and maybe one over here will look good. I don't want to obscure your view of the beetle, but I also don't want it to look like it's as I said, not in an open field. So it's got to look like it's kind of surrounded with the trees. So my next course's foliage was my Cryptomeria japonica compressa. So that can go maybe somewhere. <laughs> I'll get it out of the pot first and then try positioning it. Okay, so just a little bit of root pruning on this one. That's quite a bit of root pruning. Oh well. Okay, let's get this one planted now. All right, let's try it out in the planting. So, it could go on the edge here. It could go beside the beetle here. In between these two other trees. That looks pretty good in the middle. It kind of fills that space in between the two trees, makes it look more like a dense forest. So I think that's a pretty good location. So these trees could grow, you know, quite tall in the future. I've just got to get these roots in here. Tuck them under the moss. Okay, that's looking good. Get the tree nice and vertical. Yeah, I think that's good. I'll just try the beetle out before I continue here, making sure I have enough room. Yeah, that, that's working quite nicely. It sure makes that forest uh, more dense at the back. And it looks very miniature. It's in scale with the vehicle, which is nice. Almost looks like a yew tree growing up there. Okay, so two more to plant. Um, this one's coming right forward. It has the coarsest foliage, and this one will be at the back. So let's get them planted. Okay. So I've got a low branch here, which is interesting. Guess I'll keep that. There's nothing wrong with it. This root has to go. It's just going a strange direction. This one's up too high. These are sticking up. And I think these two roots, well, yeah, they're too high. Gotta get rid of them. Three roots. 
Alright, so this one was to go up front. And yeah, I made an interesting feature on that tree. So let me get the two trees and just try them out. Okay, so far I'm not liking it. Yeah, not liking that at all. Better. No. No. I don't mind this one here. It looks quite good. Do I have to rearrange them? Possibly. Hmm. Yeah, something's not right. If that were to go there, this one here. Uh, there's the front. No. I think, you know, all these trees are the same height. It looks a bit funny. It looks better with just the one tree, I think. Like here. No. No. Well, if I plant just the one tree, I've got five trees in the planting. And if this one dies, I can replace it with this tree. I think it just doesn't look right if I have both trees on this side. It needs a bit of space. Now maybe rearranging the beetle a bit might help. No. Needs that space over this side. And... I'm just trying out different combinations here. No, it, uh, I think just the one tree here looks good. And I'll pot this up separately as a possible replacement for this one if it doesn't make it. I think it could use a small bush here just to, you know, keep that triangular form going. So I, I think... I need something very small here so I can look for something um, either a bush or you know maybe a tire or something or something to kind of fill that space in a bit a box or some tools or something so I'll get this one planted and I'll pot this one up separately so this sidewalk moss has a fine backing of silt from the sidewalk cracks and the silt kind of, you push it into the soil, the bonsai soil, and it gives a good firm contact with the bonsai soil. If the layer's too thick, you can always wash it back a bit, but it makes a nice top dressing to your bonsai soil. It's almost like a fine organic layer. I'll plant my backup tree here. In this pot, this is a pot made by Eldon Lease. He was one of the founders of the Kitchener Waterloo Bonsai Society. Last I heard, he was in his 90s. 
So yeah, kind of a special pot. So I'll get the tree planted and then we'll come back and we'll look at the Volkswagen in the little mini forest. All right, I've got that tree potted up. The roots are safely down there in the soil. And I'll keep this one in the shade also until it recovers. Here is an initial look at the planting. So I'm going to go for lunch and then we'll come back and discuss it and maybe add some more features to it. I am back from lunch. I made a slight adjustment. I moved the beetle forward a little bit and over towards the trees a little more. It really leaves an open space on this side of the planting and I need something there. Um, I'm going to try a rock there. Um, ideally a small bush would look good there if I have something really tiny. I'll look around. But it needs something there just to kind of balance the composition. Ideally a small bush if I can find one. Down here underneath the bench I have a tray that I put cuttings in. There's a bald cypress cutting, some trident maple cuttings, some Korean maple cuttings, and down here are some juniper cuttings and this one looks like it's rooted because it's growing quite strongly. So that might be the ideal little shrub for that side of the planting. So I'll get that out and we'll see if it has roots. And if it does, I'll put it in that position. There it comes. Okay. So it does have a root. Let me try it out, see if it looks good. All right, I'll see what this juniper looks like. Yeah, it looks okay here. I, I don't mind it. I'm trying to think where it would look good. I think somewhere about here. At the back, it looks too much like there's a row of trees at the back. Here, it looks like it's part of the planting. So I think I'll plant that. I think it'll look quite good there. Which means I'll have to disturb my moss once again. All right, here I go. Like that. So that looks good. I will have to prune the tree a bit. It's, you know, kind of slanting. So I will take off. Take it off to here like that. Looks a little more symmetrical, kind of matches the style of the other trees. And now I'll have a look at the planting from the front. Here is a look at the planting now. Yeah, I think that juniper just fills that area in nicely. Now, I would like a little more junk around the car. Um, Yeah, it's like, like some other metal parts that have been strewn out. Uh, I've got some tires, but they're low profile. I've got this other tire kind of hidden underneath there, so you don't really see it. Yeah, I need some like, maybe some fabric or something laying about to make it look a little junkier so it's not just the car. So I'll look around and see what I can find. I've got this rusty bit of metal can and I'm just thinking how can I use that? You know, if I have it under the engine, uh, I could cut it into smaller pieces. I don't know. be leaning on the car. I put a little wooden prop rod under the engine hood there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can use this or not. If it's 
would look good somewhere. Looks okay there. Maybe tuck it under the car a bit. No, I don't like that. Yeah, maybe just a piece of metal sitting there. I'll see if I can find something to put on top of it. I've got some birch bark here that kind of looks like, you know, fabric or something. So I could sort of put that somewhere, maybe. Nah. Looks all right. I've got some rusty nails that I found. They could look like, you know, metal pipes lying on the ground. If I cut the heads off, they would look quite good, I think. So I will try that. Maybe they could look like fence, fence posts or something. So I'll snip the heads off them and uh, see how they look. There's a look at my nails now. I cut the heads off and the points off them so they kind of look like rebar or pipes or something. Yeah, so I, I added another piece of uh, tape here, like duct tape that's weathered, just to look like junk. I, I think that's enough. I think it's cluttered enough that it looks kind of like a junky old beetle that's abandoned in a field. I had a lot of fun putting together this abandoned beetle diorama, planting the trees and painting up the vehicle to look old and ancient. Let's have a final look at the planting now. I think it'll be interesting watching this landscape change over the upcoming years, especially the trees. I think they'll change a lot. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.